is a separate quest. I did. Th th this is new. This is definitely not here before. Remembering the past. The Nanji appears to be in deep thought. The German set of your jaw, the dynamic presence, as if you've e if you're ever ready to leap into action. There's no mistake. You're an adventurer and a dependable one at that. Tell me, are you familiar with the name Louis Soir Leveilleur? Of course I am. I remember Louis Louis Soir. Even the great Louis Soir. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. Forgive me my sad my suddenness. I'm Nananji Nananji, a budding writer, and I seek to pen a biography of the great man. In particular, I wish to cover his movements leading up to the calamity. And to that end, I've requested an interview with the Immortal Flames. You served the Orzian Alliance as a tactician, you see. So there ought to be someone in the Order who had dealings with him. <laughs> Remember this. <sighs> While my request has thankfully been accepted, there's just one problem. I don't have much experience conducting interviews, and I'm worried whether I'll be able to do the proper job. As an adventurer, you're doubtless used to dealing with people. Thus, I would like, you to, like to ask you to accompany me in the capacity of an assistant. It would be tremendously reassuring to ha simply have you watching on. And if you're amenable, afterwards, I'd like to interview you as well for your own impressions. For your troubles, I'll be certain to credit you as a collaborator. So please, won't you help me with my biography that the memories of the Calamity might be preserved for future generations? I'm in your debt. To begin with, please come with me to Camp Drybone in Eastern Thamlin. There's a place I'd like to visit ahead of the interview. Camp Drybone, then. I don't know what this is. I didn't know that this was added. I assumed we were only doing the event today. This is new. But, invested as I am in this world and its characters, it has to do with Louis Swa. And I like the great Louis Swa. There you are. To explain why we're here. Oh, but I haven't even asked your name. How am I supposed to credit you if I don't even know that much? Spexia Spexifier. The Spexia Spexifier, champion of Eorzea. Small wonder I felt you were dependable. One such as you helping me with everything will surely go well. Getting back to business, the interview I've arranged is with an officer of the Immortal Flames. As there's still time, however, I thought we'd pay a visit to the nearby graveyard first, so I can explain my motivation for the biography. Okay. The Bedge song is back. I come from a small village near the Cartano Flats was burned down in the Calamity, and those who died were laid to rest here. My parents among them. Yeah, Cartano, but Cartano basically got destroyed, almost uh, almost entirely obliterated in the fall of Dalamud. 2 a.m. you can't just play a badge song. Oh yeah, you're, you're, you're across the pond, aren't you? <laughs> it's hardly an uncommon tale. After the Dread Primal emerged from Dalamud, he unleashed fiery devastation across the length and breadth of Eorzea. But as much as the Calamity has scarred the realm, it's quickly becoming just another event in the history books. Beyond occasionally giving thanks to the Archons that Eorzea was saved, people spare it little thought. But when you've lost so many loved ones, it's hard to feel that anything was saved. That's why I wish to know more about Louis Swa, by learning about his part in Eorzea's salvation. I hope that I will attain closure. That's my motivation for writing the biography. Now then, in preparation for the interview, let's review what is known about our subject. It's difficult to define exactly when the seventh Umbral Calamity was set in motion. Many historians have pointed to the Empire's Meteor Project, which sought to bring Dalamud down upon Eorzea. It was the year 1562 of the Sixth Astral Era. Seeking to combat the Imperial threat, Louis Swa founded the Circle of Knowing, an order whose objective was, to pre was the preservation of Eorzea. By Fire Reborn, the Immortal Flames. If you didn't know this, uh, Yoshi P is a pretty big uh, World of Warcraft fan. <laughs> there are a lot of... Uh, a Realm Reborn specifically has a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of uh, spatter a smattering of like vanilla all the way... Well, even all Warcraft 1 all the way to Mists of Pandaria. Mists of Pandaria being the direct inspiration for A Realm Reborn and how he redid the game when he took over. Uh, there's a, he's a very, very big fan of World of Warcraft, it turns out. <laughs> so there's there's little bits and pieces you can spat, spat, spot that are like, Ah, I know that. As a, as a War, Warcraft fan, I know this.
Through its members, the Archons of Charlian, the Circle, worked to unite the nations of Eorzea in common cause. I mean, WoW is almost 20 years old, yeah. Warcraft itself turns 30 next year. The result was the formation of the Grand Companies in the three city-states. Immortal Flames, the Order of the Twin Adder, and the Maelstrom. None of these would exist now were it not for their efforts. It's crazy to think I'm a year older than World of War or than Warcraft as a franchise. That's insane. And then in the year 1572, when the situation was coming to a head, Louis Swa himself made the journey to Eorzea in secret and engaged with each of the nations. What took place during that time is what I seek to learn in the interview. Spec says Babby, I'm only 30. I am a, I'm a, I'm a youngin. I'm a youngin. The man we're due to meet is, in, is the contact for the Free Brigade, a unit formed of adventurers, and he apparently had Louis Swa's assistance for a mission. Meeting place is Highbridge to the northeast. It's more or less time now, so let's keep let's make our way there. Thirty, you said you were one year older than WoW. Yeah. War Warcraft as a franchise started in 1994. I was born in 1993. World of Warcraft was started in 2004. Ten years later, Warcraft itself started in 1994. That's when Warcraft One launched for PC. I'm slightly- I think I'm older than Warcraft as a franchise by, like, a few months. Our destination. We have arrived. This is more upbeat. This isn't- this isn't veg music. the ones who seek an interview? I must say, I wasn't expecting to see the champion of Eorzea. I'm the Nanji Nononji, the writer who made the request, and Spexia has kindly accompanied me for the interview. I can't thank you enough for th taking the time out of your busy schedule to humor me. See, I associate World of Warcraft with WoW, the MMO. You meant the Warcraft universe. Miscommunication, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, Warcraft itself, as a franchise, is 30 years old next year, and then World of Warcraft turned 20 next year, which is also equally crazy to think about. <laughs> I've been playing World of Warcraft since 2009. That's insane. <laughs> Come now, no need for the thanks. Like everyone, I hold Louis Swa in the highest esteem. If you wish to know about him, Poland Aubrey is always glad to oblige. Poland Aubrey, what a name. What a name. Without further ado, then let us begin. Group of Warcraft, Starcraft, Command and Conquer. Dude, I actually just recently picked up uh, the Command and Conquer titles that released on Steam recently. I got those, Total Annihilation. I don't, I don't, I've never played Starcraft 1, but I absolutely fell in love with the RTS genre from Starcraft 2, Wings of Liberty. It, it's one collector's edition I don't own that I wish I owned because I fucking love StarCraft 2. StarCraft 2 is such a good fucking video game. My understanding is you had dealings with Louis Swa. Could you please tell me the details? It still runs perfectly on Monitor? Yes. I bought it for $5 and made sure it worked, and it does still run very, very well. You didn't like StarCraft 2? I fucking, dude, I played so much StarCraft 2. I had never I had never played an RTS game before StarCraft 2, but I I got interested in Total War, uh, Command and Conquer. Now Total Annihilation I only just learned about recently, but grabbed that. But uh, I'll give you that. Yeah, the custom map generator wasn't great for StarCraft 2. I, I I do wish that was better. I don't know if it ever got better, but I know back when I still played it, it wasn't very good. Yeah, there was no reason to move off Warcraft 3. Yeah, Warcraft 3 definitely had the better custom maps for sure. I liked StarCraft 2 for its uh, for its campaign. I, I felt the campaign and the difficulty scaling for the campaign was a lot of fun, personally. I, I played a lot of StarCraft 2 campaign. 
As you know, our grand companies were formed thanks to the Circle of Knowing, but it wasn't until Dallin began turning red that Louis Swa first appeared. This is cool. This is going back and telling this lead up to what led to the end of 1.0. Began with the word of it with the word that an elderly Elizan man had come to Gridania who held the key to vanquishing primals. Upon learning of this, I sent an adventurer, the Free Brigade, to make contact with him. I later learned that the Maelstrom and the Order of the Twin Adder had done the very same. At that time, our companies weren't yet collaborating. Each one only thought to stay ahead of the others. The truth be told, at first we didn't think much of Louisois, only that he was the leader of the scholars who studied particular prophecies. But when the adventurer reported back, our opinion of the man completely changed. I wish Warcraft 2 would get a facelift for modern systems. It's so goddamn good. Yeah. I just... If they're gonna do that, they need to actually follow through. Thankfully, the person who caused Warcraft 3 Reforged and the shitstorm it turned into no longer is with Blizzard. Forcibly. For good reason. But I'd love to see the Warcraft, Warcraft 1, 2, and 3 remastered. Because I'm, like, properly done. Because those games are just such a fucking gem. Even, like, we to remaster them and, like, put, like, things in that connect directly to World of Warcraft so you get a full actual, like, tie-in. As, as a pretty big Warcraft lore nerd, that would be pretty fucking pogged out of my mind for that. Which a bunch of cute, uh, we're gonna conquer RA games would too, but it's EA now. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that ever coming out of EA again. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if EA shifts course and we suddenly start getting not live service out of that entire empire. With his spellcraft, Louis Swa had opened the way into Ifrit's domain, and by the hand of dauntless adventurers, the Lord of the Inferno was brought low. Alas, many defeats preceded that victory. It was reported that countless charred corpses laid strewn in the Bowl of Embers. Now, the mission also yielded a shocking re re uh, revelation. Following the battle, Legatus nailed that Von Darnus of the 7th Imperial Legion appeared to, and told the adventurer that the Hour of Reckoning was at hand, that Dalamud would soon fall and cleanse the land. This is cool that they put this in the game like this, because you couldn't see all this con all this information really wasn't in the game before this little thing. This is a nice little thing to throw together. That was when we realized that the Empire was behind the Red Moon's anomaly. So thanks to Louis Swa, you came to be aware of the Meteor Project. Still, it doesn't seem like you had much of it, much to act upon. As you say, afterwards, we scrambled to learn all we could about the project. For a blessing, we had the cooperation of a Garlean defector, Sid Garland, whom you know well. We revealed the details of the project, that it utilized a transmission tower to pluck Dalamud from the heavens, all for the purpose of pur purging us savages from the realm. continue telling you what I know, but from this point on, there is someone better suited than I am. If you're interested, I would be glad to introduce you to this individual. What say you? Well, now we'd be keen to speak with this person indeed. Very well. I will send word to the Adder's Nest. If you can take yourselves to Ap Apkalu Falls, I will arrange for a meeting there. But at such lengths to help us, I can't say how grateful I am. Do not mention it. As I said, I hold Louis Swa in the highest esteem. He was the one who brought our three nations together, and nothing would please me more than for him to be remembered. Well, it's past time I return to Uldah. I pray that the coming interview bears you fruit. Having the context of Shadowbringers and then Endwalkers storytelling and the characters we meet in that gives this quest so much more weight. Lieutenant certainly has a great respect for Louis Swa. And thanks to him, we have another promising interview. Come, let's head to Gridania where the Archon is sojourned. I'm, I, I, I'm a pretty big lore nerd. 
I'm the kind of guy that like will finish story content and then for months afterwards spend my downtime at work theory crafting what the next possible big story beat's gonna be. It's the mountainous mod friend. <laughs> But I sp I, I'm the kind of guy that spends a lot of time, you know, figuring out like, where does I, where does my character fit in the story? How did my character react to, to how things happened? And then like thinking about how stuff you don't see on screen would have played out. How how different characters would have interacted with the same situation. I like that. I'm I'm a, I'm a pretty big fucking lore nerd. Which is probably why I'm a big Lord of the Rings nerd too. <laughs> I like lore, but ADHD brain says I can't read all the time, and especially not when I want to have gameplay. So FF14, which is words, 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 is just yeah, too much. Yeah, I can definitely understand that. I have a couple of friends that they they definitely are on the uh, the ADD, HD, ADHD like spectrum, and they had to really kind of like pace themselves to get through. Like they'd go and they'd do a bit of story, and then it was like, hey, let's go run dungeons or something for a couple hours or something, or I'm gonna go play another game for two, three days and come back to this. And it's like, yeah, go go ahead do that because they really wanted to experience the story the game had to tell but like some of them have only ever done the main content like i've done everything i've done all the side content i've done most of the classes i've done all the story missions i've done everything there is to do because i just was like i want to just immerse myself in this it's amazing they were like i i can only do so much because i just can't stick with it i i get like well and I was like, dude, right, this is a game where you can pick it up and play it and then not play it for two weeks and come back to it. It's like you just hit continue on a first on a single player save file. It's, I think that's like the be the biggest selling point of this game is it's like RuneScape. When you hit log off, it's effectively like you're paused the game. And or like you hit save and quit and then you come back in and you just hit continue and you're right where you left off. You're not behind. You're not missing out on anything jump back in i think that i i thought i think that's probably the biggest draw this game has to so many people lore's voice no problem let me play at the same time though yeah i guess i definitely can understand that i like that i wish there was a better way to do that a lot of games do that in ways that's all uh, like proximity interaction so as you're walking you'll hit a certain location and it triggers an event I wish there was a better way to do that in games, and I, I'm sure there is ways to do that that makes it so characters don't start talking over themselves or cutting themselves off because you're moving too fast. You accidentally speedrun the story. He thinks we'll remember what the fuck was going on when we left. Honestly, I think well, a good way to... A, a game that does a really good job of that, that's a big narrative game, is the Yakuza games. The Yakuza games do a really good job of recapping what happened when you hit continue again. You haven't been on the game for a while. I think if, I think if more games did a small recap as you log back in, it would be really good for basically everybody. Because it's one of those of, there's the hook word. That for, now I remember everything I, for, I, I wasn't at before. The human brain is weird, and there's weird ways to do that. Witcher 3 had something like that, except it didn't help anything. Yeah, Yak Yakuza is really good about giving you the important beats in like three sentences. Like, here you go. Dragon Quest XI did the same thing. Dragon Quest XI was, they also adopted that, which is funny because it's also a Square game. Dragon Quest XI did that with uh, its log back and would give you a small recap as you logged in. I think Dragon Quest IX also did, but it wasn't as good as it was in XI. XI did a much better job. So this is a Kalu Falls. Conspicuous lack of the creatures aside, it's quite a beautiful place. Now then, the person we're meant to meet along will be should be along shortly. I couldn't read that. I struggle to read sometimes, which is really funny because English is my only language. Bum 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 bum. I was told there was. I was told there were those who wished to learn about Louis Swa, and who should be one of them but the champion of Eorzea. Well met. I am Lieutenant Ciro Folk of the Order of the Twin Adder. Statistically average! <laughs> I, I technically also know a little of Spanish. 
but for taking seven years of it, I can't say I'm fluent or even remotely literate. <laughs> it technically did take seven years of Spanish, though. Nananji Nanonji, at your service. Thank you for sparing the time to speak with us. I think nothing of it. I must say, though, that Lieutenant Aubrey chose the perfect spot for the subject matter. Luzpa spent much time in rumination here in the days before the Calamity. The Gridanians being somewhat reserved by nature, at first the citizens kept their distance. I mean, I already knew you were illiter illiterate because you have the dumb. Yeah. I may be dumb, but I'm not an idiot. How's it going, Cider? How'd your, uh, how'd your test go? I hope you're, uh, well, you probably don't, I would imagine there's probably, they probably have a couple days before results, but hopefully, uh, the old needle stick wasn't too bad. But in time, people warmed to him. He patiently lent an ear to their troubles, healing hurts and offering counsel, and gradually earned their trust. We're learning about the late, the great Louis Soi. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. Louis spoke those words, and lived upon them, but lived up to them. He was the epitome of a Charlian sage, and I recall myself being moved. Look at the results till possibly Monday, they took four, vi four vials of blood. Good god, a lot of blood. How dare they make you bleed your own blood. <laughs> now, shortly after we had become aware of the meteor project, the hamlet of Quarry Mill was attacked by the primal Garuda. Both soldiers and civilians are among the casualties. Garuda. The Order of the Twin Adder moved to vanquish the Primal, but we were not alone. Through Louis Soie's medi uh, mediation, we had the support of not only our sister grand companies, but capable adventurers the realm over besides. Using an artifact known as the Vortex Feather, the Archon opened the way for a band of adventurers to sally forth into Garuda's turbulent domain, where they felled the fearsome being. Downfall. Upon her defeat, however, the primal's dispersed aether did not return to the land. Instead, it was absorbed into the red moon Dalamud. When the Empire constructed a new base in Mordona, the Elder Seed Seers saw the need for decisive action and put forth a proposal. A formation, formal reformation of the Eorzean Alliance, which had for so long lain dormant. The initial response from the other nations was the lukewarm at best. They felt that the burden for to be borne by each party was excessive, and they were loath to do aught that would place them at a disadvantage against their rivals. So, when Garuda died back then, her essence got sucked up into Dalamud, like, just like how they were getting sucked up into the Ultima weapon. Interesting. Two vials for blood proteins, the other two for plasma proteins? Ooh. That's a lot of tests. I remember this when they redid it. the questions they had to ask was, have you had any major surgeries before, and if so, how many? Did you, did you get out the, uh, did you get, pu pull out the old, uh, the old Cimmerellian of, oh, alright, let's, uh, let's see, let's go back in the beginning. <laughs> the answer was just, yes. <laughs> I've had many. The revelation of the lunar transmitter had been erected in the Imperial base prompted a change of heart. The tower controlled Dalamud's descent. If it could be destroyed, then the meteor project would be forestalled. After having constantly been on the back foot, our nations were motivated to join hands. We might strike a decisive blow against the enemy. Thus was the Eorzean Alliance reformed, and the circle of no as the Circle of Knowing had hoped. Boom, boom. At the same juncture, Louis Soi was asked to join the Alliance as a tactician. In that capacity, he proved, provided sage counsel to heads of state. So, although he was at first treated with wariness, Louis Soi earned our trust through his actions and paved the way to enduring cooperation between our nations. Indeed, were not for him, we would all have perished, have perished divided. We owe Louis Soi a great debt. Now then, I expect you might be interested in hearing about the operation to destroy the lunar transmitter. 
I will ask them because they were looking at my full medical records and in total I have deep breath. 248 screws, 15 plates, 6 rods, 22 pins, and 4 titanium mesh cages in total. Faster, stronger, more powerful than ever before, he is the six million dollar man. <laughs> that is fucking wild. You are a walking goddamn miracle, John. A walking fucking miracle. <laughs> Actual cyborg people S. <laughs> Who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> Actually, it's more like the 2.4 million dollar man. It's still a lot of fucking money and a lot of gun. You're lucky to be walking around still. I've known guys that have had half of that that don't even stand up straight, let alone still able to do what you do, so. Shoutouts to medical science. But for that tale, I would recommend you seek out another, a decorated soldier who actually took part in the operation. Although a hardened warrior, she is quite friendly and should be glad to regale you with her experiences. Shall I send her word on your behalf? Fuck walking around, I'm lucky to be alive for the sixth time. Also fair. Also fair. Every, every day you still wake up as a... Huh. Not today, Grim Reaper. <laughs> Not today. Well, if you can take yourselves to Maelstrom Command and Limsa Lemon's eyes, she'll see that she knows to expect you. With that, I shall take my leave. I pray that the biography is a success. I think these are also like the original commanders for the Grand Companies back in 1.0. Me and Reaps are good friends, we just roll the dice, and if I win, I get to live another year. <laughs> Gamba. Everyone has been more helpful than I dared to hope. It seems Louis Swa had quite an influence on others. The interview gave us some valuable insights into his character, and I'm eager to see what we learn in the next. Come, let us head to Limsa Liminsa. Haven't failed a roll yet. <laughs> he just he just lives on Gamba. Yeah, Cider's, uh, Cider's seen some shit for being a few months younger than me. He's, uh, he's seen some shit, that's for sure. You guys lived a fucking lifetime and a half. But we're happy to still have him around. He's a he's a he's a he's one of the true homies. He's seen more shit than most people see in three. True. <laughs> Big true. There it is, Maelstrom Command, shall we then? Honestly though, I do hope you keep winning those uh, saving throws against death. I'd like to keep you around for a while. I, I enjoy your company for whatever reason. Something something about you, I don't know. I just seem to like you for some reason, so. It'd be pretty sad if you weren't around anymore. You better stick around or I'll cry. I'll do it, I'll fucking do it. I'll fucking cry, you don't want that. Captain Specifier, ever a sight for sore eyes. You must be Nananji. I have, I have, I do have the rank of captain in the, uh, the Grand Company of Limsa. Quite proud of all the work I put in for that. Rasha Tot Riki, at your service. I understand you wish to hear about the operation to destroy the lunar transmitter. Indeed, I'm penning a biography on the Archon Louis Soi, you see, for which I'm interviewing people who had dealings with him. I truly appreciate your time. I've ever two kicked the bucket just want everyone to get together and get so drunk it turns into a puke fest and smoke enough weed to hotbox a mansion. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like that's the one the one way we could absolutely honor such a just absolutely wild life. <laughs> I can think of very few other ways to celebrate that. Hopefully we don't have to do that for a very long time, though. You're very welcome. I would be glad to assist even if it wasn't a request from Lieutenant Fulp. <laughs> well then, to continue where we, where we left off, 
It was shortly after the Orzine Alliance was formed, our scouts returned with word that the 7th Legion had activated the Lunar Transmitter in their fortress in Mordona. Now known as Castrum Sentry, the fortress was originally called Castrum Novum before the 14th restored and renamed it. It was in order to break through its defenses and destroy the transmitter that our three nations joined hands, and we were determined to succeed. The strategy that Louis Swa proposed was elegant in its simplicity. While our main force drew the Garlean's attention with, our all -out, with an all-out siege, an elite band of adventurers would infiltrate the Castrum and make for our objective. So this 2.0 storyline isn't that much different from the 1.0 storyline. Because that was how we raided Castrum Sentry, as the main the main uh, host of the uh, Eorzean Alliance would engage the Garleans, while we went through and did the Castrum and Praetorium uh, dungeons that eventually culminated with destroying the Ultima weapon. I, li I, like, uh, I like the dude in the, uh, with the open shirt. John, there's two of you in here now. <laughs> uh, we'd entrusted adventurers at ridding us of the primals. Now we entrusted them with the very fate of Eorzea. I still remember the operation as if it were yesterday. Though we met with fierce resistance, we fought more fiercely still. No matter the cost, we had to ensure that the adventurers had a chance to strike at the transmitter. When the messenger arrived bearing word that they'd succeeded, uh, it still makes my heart sore to recall that moment of triumph. The archer in this uh, screenshot, that's the trainer for the bard class, if I'm not mistaken. And I think the guy with the sword is from the gladiators guild now? Or possibly the paladin trainer. All three of these characters struck, because we know Richty's the commander for the Maelstrom. But I'm pretty sure the guy with the bow is the bard trainer now. Plus two, good good, uh, good callback. I like that. Nice job, 14. Nice job. That day we learned that by standing together, the people of Eorzea could oppose even the might of the Empire. There's no exaggeration to say that a victory pa paved the way of Eorzea's future. Without it, there would have not have been an Operation Archon. Alas, it wasn't all glad tidings, for though we destroyed the transmitter, Nail Van Darnus appeared and claimed that he no longer needed the device to bring down Dalamud, that he himself had the power to do so. So long as Van Darnus lived, the threat of destruction remained, and so, branding him an enemy to all life in Eorzea, the nations of the Alliance undertook a desperate manhunt. At length, they located him in Corthus and sent their greatest warriors to hunt him down. Leading that formidable band was the adventurer whom they called the Warrior of Light. Though no records remain of the fierce encounter, one thing is certain. At battle's conclusion, Nail Van Darnus was brought low. That was the previous Warrior of Light. As you know, however, our woes did not end with the White Raven, for Louis Swa and his disciples determined that Dalamud would continue to fall. In a last-ditch bid to prevent the realm's annihilation, the Circle of Knowing issued a request to the Orzine Alliance to secure the Cardinal Flats where the Red Moon was expected to crash. We later found out why. It was no simple task, for the entirety of the 7th Legion had amassed in Cardinal, but it was necessary in order to perform a ritual to stop Dalamud, a ritual that invoked the power of the Twelve. So it was that the Battle of Cardinal was joined, and I dare say you know how the tale continues. To everyone's shocked, the Elder Primal Bahamut emerged from Dalamud, proceeded to unleash his fury upon the realm. Aye, and though all bore witness as Louis Swa initiated the ritual, none remember what came to pass afterwards. Neither what happened to Balamut, nor why the realm was reborn. The haze that afflicted memories of the Calamity. But people remember events prior to that moment, yes? If so, do you know if anyone was near Louis Swa during the battle? Someone who may have spoken with him? If someone was near him, I'm afraid I do not know. He was atop a rise for the ritual while I was a good distance away on the front lines. My apologies. No, no, please don't apologize. You shared a wealth of information and I couldn't ask for more. Well, if you're satisfied, then so am I. With that, I shall return to my duties. I look forward to re reading the biography when it's finished. I like how because I'm a member of the storm, I give her a salute when we leave. It, it is big people talk. This is definitely a game that uh, it does not shy away from its storytelling. 
Now I have a grasp leading up to the calamity, and yet... No, oh, forgive me, I was deep in thought. In no small part due to your help, I managed to learn quite a deal. There's still more that I wish to know. Might I trouble you to accompany me a little longer? If you're willing, please let me know. Absolutely. End of an era framers kit. Ooh, we get a new customization unlock from this. The actual, like, gameplay side of 14 is really good. I really like it. There's a lot of the game that is voiced, but there is most of the game is not voiced. You do have to read a lot of the game. Even with you reading it aloud, I just zone out? Oh, I'm trying my best. <laughs> you continue accompanying me, then. Wonderful. Come, let's head to the Drowning Wench and discuss our next move. Yes, the, the bar in town is called the Drowning Wench. Bum, 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 Our research proceeds apace so far. We've even learned things not found in literature. But tell me, based on what you've heard from our interviewees, what is your opinion of Louis Swah? He's an exceptional leader. I don't agree with the other ones. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go. Other other people deserve more more credit. I agree. He possessed great leadership. If not, he couldn't have established the framework to realize his plans, no matter how brilliant they may have been. What struck me was how grateful the interviewees were to Louis Swa for bringing their nations together in cooperation. It was nothing short of necessary for our survival. Yet, in knowing this, I can't help but wonder. In his capacity as a tactician, it seems to me he had done not done more than enough by devising a plan and facilitating its execution. He went far beyond that, risking life and limb on the front lines for a land not his own. Perhaps he needed to be there for the ritual. Perhaps he felt a sense of duty. Even so, as noble as it is to desire to help others, what good is it if you, can end, up, if you end up sacrificing yourself? What was it that compelled Louis Swa to go to Cartno? And what, when, what went through his mind as the battle unfolded? In order to do his biography justice, I feel I need to know these things. If Louis Swa had people near him at the time, perhaps he shared words with them in his final moments. Words that could provide some insights, but where to begin searching for such individuals, assuming they exist? What about the homies? Hey, Batteron. Sorry, friends, but I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Just so happens I know a bloke has served just among Louis Swa's guard at Cartno. That accent was terrible. Truly, you'd know someone who was with him. Aye, and as far as I'm aware, he wasn't keeping the fact a secret. Just for good measure, though, why do you want to speak with him? Louis Swa's biography, eh? In that case, I reckon the bloke would be willing to cooperate. See, unlike Tyrion Fordring, Louis Swa would want Eorzea to remember him. <laughs> Tyrion didn't want anybody to remember him. <laughs> Orn Gwincombs. Yep, come. His name is Gwincom. Wouldn't look up that Dark Souls mod if I were you. Bad idea. He was a lieutenant in the Maelstrom. After the Calamity, he turned to adventurans so as to be a greater help to the common folk. It's a good thing I can read and understand pirate. Maelstrom officer turned adventurer. He'd be most keen to speak with him. Where might he be found? When Orn dropped in the other day, he said he had business at the Morby Dry Docks. If you're lucky, he might as might as might be as he's still there. Difficult. Can't let this chance pass us by, Spexia. Let's take ourselves to the Dry Docks at once. Who are the Dry Docks? The Dock of Drying. Dry Docking. Don't look that up either. Talk this. Don't dock that, actually. Don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> right, where could Orn be? In hindsight, we should have asked what he looks like. His name would suggest he's a Midlander, but, uh... Well, nothing for it to make inquiries. Let's split up the ta for the task and meet again here. I'm <laughs> glad I'm not into that. <laughs> Just the meme of Skeletor jokes on you. I'm into that shit. 
Hey, look, it's it's Alpha and Omega, the homies. I wonder if we wave to Alpha. Does they wave back? Do they, does he wave back? Hang on. Emotes. Okay. I was curious of whether or not the uh, Alpha and Omega would wave to you, given that they turn to acknowledge you. Those are two characters from a quest line later in the game, but after you finish the quest line, they pop up all over the world. You can occasionally run into them in random places. Sorry, but I've only just started helping out here. I'm still learning our customers' names. I couldn't say if it's the person you're after, but a man did come by earlier who appeared to be an adventurer. He bought a, Nam a Namiya Lily that we're currently trialing. A Nimia Lily. Oh, there's there's lore to that. What is the what is the there's significance to that particular flower? Guess what class I am mating now on WoW and already have gotten to top one herbal purses as a tank on it. Is it Druid? Have we come full circle? Is the Arch Druid finally returned? Looking for an Orn Gwincum, you say? Yep, come. Don't know him by that name, I'm afraid. I did walk by an unfamiliar fellow just now, though, over by the mark of the spinner. He had a flower in his hand, so he caught my eye. Oh, you're back to Demon Hunter, of all things. Your top 100 world parses for Mythic? Jeez. I went down the drain, then DPS meters and item level, item power because the end became end all be all. Yeah, it's getting into end game. Wow, is definitely uh, it feels a lot like. What do you want to play? Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't help that a lot of the dev team lean into that being how they want people to play. Or, as it happens, I spoke with him just earlier. Said that he wanted to buy flowers, so direct him to a vendor. Not sure where he is as of now, though. You have an inkling as to where Orn might be. Time to rejoin Dananji. Yeah, I still really like World of Warcraft, and I think that the game is in a really good direction, but I think they still have a lot to do. There you are, Spexia. Were you able to learn anything? This man who could be Orn bought a Nimia Lily, then went to the Mark of the Spinner. If we hurry there, we might be able to find him. Let's go. Yeah, WoW, WoW needs to have a lot of uh, introspection as to what made it what it is. I really like the fiasco currently going on with the... um the overlays that people designed that very quickly were, uh, guys, did you not think that this was a bad idea? I'm waiting for Ian to take away all the add-ons at this point. Actually, Chris Metzen's back doing narrative. I'm very confident in the narrative for WoW going forward. Dragonflight's been a dream for storytelling compared to previous years. It's still not perfect, mind you, but it's definitely significantly better than it's been. Begging your pardon, sir, but are you Lieutenant Orn Gwyncombe? I haven't been a lieutenant for years, but I, that's me. What can I do for you? I realize this is sudden, but... So you're writing Louis Swall's biography, and you want to hear my account as someone who was near on hand at Cartno. There must be a reason that you're here too, the warrior of light who led us to victory in Operation Archon. Very well, I will tell you my tale. 
How then? Where to begin? As you know, the battle was fought over the land where Dalamud was expected to fall. In the beginning, neither side was able to gain the upper hand. When the Imperials deployed their Magitek armor, our ranks were thrown into disarray. Those charged with protecting Louis Swa like me could only watch the carnage from afar. Though our forces managed to hold out, the how hold out thanks to the adventurer contingent, we sustained grievous casualties. The real tragedy was what followed. As Dalamud hurtled towards us, it began shredding fragments of itself before finally bursting open to unleash the primal behemoth. As all below looked on in shock, the battle completely forgotten, Behemoth took wing and spewed fire all over the land. Men in Magitek armor alike were set ablaze and sent flying like so many insects. So this actually took place in-game when this all happened. And when the when Behemoth released, it basically did like when Deathwing would hit a zone in Cataclysm and just killed everybody. This was like the first thing uh, Yoshi P put in the game. So he, it, he popped out killed everybody, a cutscene played, and then it said, thank you for playing Final Fantasy XIV, we'll see you in A Realm Reborn. And the game servers went down. And it all happened in live, like, real time. It was a really cool way to do it. And it's referenced in the opening cinematic for A Realm Reborn. But this was like an actual event that took place that players were involved and engaged with. I only realized that I had stopped breathing when a commanding voice broke my trance. You've done enough, Louis Swat told us. Now fly! Fly and save yourselves! Fly, you fools! Okay, Gandalf. But like my fellow guards, I wanted to remain. I couldn't charge in a battle beside my comrades. At the very least, I would do my duty here and protect Louis Swat of the last. But upon seeing us standing there, not making the, not making the move, Louis Swat smiled and spoke thus. If you would give your lives to protect something, then protect my hopes. Every soul who lives to determine their own fate is a source of hope, bright and brilliant. So live, I bid you, and be among those who bear the light for others to follow. Those words awakened us to a greater purpose. It was there my hope in my... If there was hope in my living, then I would live as Louis Swa bid. No matter what, I would survive. And so, together with my fellows, I began making my retreat. Alas, we hadn't gotten far when an explosion erupted and sent us sprawling. I struggled to my feet just in time to see the enormous, menacing silhouette of Bahamut looming over Louis Swa. And the next instant, he was enveloped in light, and that was the last I remember of him. Fly, you fools! <laughs> Louis Swa's final moment. Amidst that light, he looked to be smiling. What he was thinking in that moment, I couldn't say. But one thing is certain. We all of us are alive thanks to him. Hmm, following the calamity, it was reported that Louis Swa defeated Bahamut and set about the land's miraculous regeneration. You believe that this is the truth? Every soul who lives to determine their own fate is a source of hope. What we've learned is reaffirmed my belief, Spexia. The belief that Louis Swa was not an all-powerful savior one reads about in tales, but merely an ordinary man. But that man never forsook Eorzea. No, he stood for this realm to the last. He and countless other brave souls, and saved, saved it from becoming a scorched waste. Against unimaginable adversity he fought, and at the cost of his life, paved the way for, to a brighter future for us all. The least I can do is, in return is tell his story. Spread his message that when there is life, there is hope. With this is Japanese and the story holds your hand and moves your hand, all it steps through to really iterate the points over and over. Yeah, it's a Japanese way of storytelling. That's just how it is. I like it. That's not to say I dislike other ways of storytelling. By no means. I, 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 if I had to compare myself to another streamer, I would probably compare myself to Smokaloke. I, I find good in things to a fault. 
There are definitely times where I'll sing, I really, really dislike this particular thing. But I find it very difficult to just go outright, this is bad and shouldn't be done. <laughs> I think smoke is probably the best comparison I can draw to myself. I just like games. Thanks to your account, I believe I've found an angle for the biography. I'm truly grateful. I am also biased to this as it tickles my itch deeply of just really liking lore. This game's a very good lore dump. Here to offer prayer as well. A prayer that the light of hope was truly swapped, preserved, shall ever burn bright. That you won't play the Monster Hunter games. And Monster Hunter is just a, it's a game that I respect for what it is. It just doesn't click with me as all. Well. I've played a lot of them. Hang on, let me let me check here. Just just to affirm that I have played Monster Hunter a lot. I, I didn't just like play it for like an hour or two and then went, I really don't like this. Monster Hunter World, I have 230 hours in the game. I have 56 of the 100 potential achievements. I played a lot of Monster Hunter World. I think I played more than enough of it to go, I really don't care for this. And then Rise, I played 35 hours of, but that's on the PC version. I also have like another 70 hours on Rise on the Switch version, because I got it on Switch when it released on Switch originally. I, and I, that on this I even, I have seven achievements here, but I have most of them unlocked on, on the Switch already. I've played Monster Hunter. I just didn't care for it. But I gave it more than a fair shot. I gave it a lot more fair shot than I gave Pokemon. I didn't put that many hours into Scarlet. I didn't like Rise pretty much only because of the goddamn wire bugs. I got used to the wire bugs. I didn't like Rise for the same reasons I didn't like World. Rise didn't do anything... Anything new that Rise brought in was actually really cool, but it was fundamentally still World, and I didn't care for World. I've never played any other Monster Hunter before World, but I've been told if I didn't care for World and Rise, I'm probably not going to like the other ones either. Would you care to offer prayer as well? Oh, I read this. I got distracted. And we pray. Oh my god, do I pray? <laughs> no, I thought the wire bugs were neat. Maybe not totally executed very well, but I thought the wire bugs were a cool idea. I think it was a, a cool expansion, like an iteration to the um the the claw shot thing. The claw shot thing was really cool though. Yeah, I'm told if you started with, like, the OG Monster Hunters and played through, it's an easier like Like, you can go forward with Monster Hunter, but you can't go backwards with them. It's not really a game that lends itself well to that, I guess. The Calamity left deep scars across the realm. There was no place that did not want for help to rebuild. Being saved by our twin and our allies, I decided to become an adventurer. To better be the better to honor Louis Soie's legacy and lend aid to those in need. During my travels, I often hear of your tales, and I'm glad I could share my own with you. Allow me to thank you again for recounting your experiences to us. Hey, tis I who owes you thanks for giving me the chance to share Louis Soie's words. All these years, I had avoided speaking of the moment of his passing out of respect, but it would not do to take the tale to my grave. Through the biography, it is my hope that his spirit will live on in all of us. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I shall resume my pilgrimage to the Marks. Wherever your travels take you, I shall be praying for your safety. Wirebugs just felt like MMO cooldowns who were mandatory to do real damage. That definitely felt like the uh like that like that was true for sure. It definitely felt like the wirebug stuff wasn't something that could really be optional. Like you had to learn wirebugs or you just weren't gonna get things finished in time. Especially as you got to harder and harder difficulty content. Which I guess both kind of makes sense, but is also kind of like, mm, maybe not. I don't feel like everyone's going to like this. Nimia Lily is the symbol of safe passage. As Louis Swass stood there in Cartano, I wonder if he likewise prayed for someone's safety. 
At any rate, these interviews have yielded everything I had hoped for and more. Come, let us return to Ulda. I'll have your reward for you at, the, at Ulda at the Hall of Flames. This is a really fun, just, uh, like, little trek around the old world. I quite like this. I get it, but I play Monster Hunter for big bonk, big monster, not become an anime protagonist. Oh, no, I agree with you. I, I really liked Bo, but I never used... Like, I played most of Monster Hunter World in the beginning time of playing it, only really understanding that Dragon Piercer did damage. So I really only... I didn't learn how to, like, quick tap bow shots to deal damage, or how to utilize the, like, dodge mechanic, or the, uh... The, like, I still really don't understand the balls fall from the air attack at all. I don't understand that in the slightest still, but I didn't figure that out until like hour like 160, something close to that. Like I was excessively deep in the game when I actually started to really understand how weapons work. I beat the Kirin and it's a 45 minute fight before I fought, before I moved into high rank, just to prove a point. I battled that motherfucker for two weeks. I spent probably no lie about the same amount of time that Barb spent on Kaizo 3 Bowser fighting that fucking Kirin. I broke two controllers in the process. Yeah. That shit was fucking hard. I didn't have high rank armor or weapons unlocked yet because I didn't do the story quest. I did all the side quests before progressing the story. I learned two different weapons in the process of fighting Kirin. When I finally got him, though, I was one of the one of my only friends that fought low rank Kirin before you had access to high rank or master rank equipment. Though, I was the only one of the only people that actually beat him. Everybody else was like, oh, "I went back there once I had high rank stuff." I did it before I had high rank even unlocked. I have to add a bunch of BTTV emotes. Honestly, there's a lot of them that are missing. I'm very bad about keeping up on that. There you are. I ended up troubling you longer than I had intended, but it was truly a fruitful series of interviews. How fortunate that we could hear from those who lived that fateful time. I still have many questions. The biography is beginning to take shape in my mind. I also feel as though I've attained a new measure of closure. Louis Swaff fought simply as one of us, and he made the ultimate sacrifice that hope might endure. This I've come to realize and appreciate thanks to everyone's heartfelt testimonies. Now then, last but not least, I'd like to ask you for your thoughts on something. According to Orn, Louis Swa smiled in his final moment. As he was enveloped in light, what do you think he imagined Imagine he held in his mind? It's pointless to speculate on such things or the image of mankind thriving in the future. I see, I see. I appreciate your thoughts. As I pen this biography, I'll be certain to remember your words. Well, sad, as the sad though it is, it's time for us to part ways. I'll set to work on a draft, and I won't rest until the biography goes to print. Thank you for all your help, my friend. I couldn't have come this far without you. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, that's gotta be like a new quest that just got added. The end of an era framers kit. What does this look like? Oh, that's cool. It's the, um, it's the fade out for Louis Swa. Well, that's the uh, that's the end of that. I like this quite a bit. This was really good. What's that? It's only nine o'clock, dude. You know what we have time for, chat? We have time for the messenger. 